rootless birds. They were younger than me, yellowish wrinkled pictures pinched in their hands. Young men's dark eyes were smooth and unblemished. Every representation begins with the desire of imagining a face. On whose shore, who all promised to wait, becoming their husbands, crumbling their expectation, untying their white silk kimonos, filling with dry wind and broken shards. They were standing between the oceans and plains, between nowhere and hometown. They were living with murals and men, with tar-papered shacks and neighbors' gossip. They were enduring the inspections of wrists and ankles, of sweep of brooms and carpet patterned with insect feet. In ears of whirlwind dust, without the help of murals and the love from men, they witnessed everything by their faces. Children swinging from the dusk to sunset, hibiscus bloomed in between weathering. Men's eyes wandering on the ground from dull to far-fetched, but they still grew different when alone with God. Some of them pick up a brush to paint the clouds, dreaming back to rest at mother's feet. Some of them took portraits in the photo studio. Unfamiliar with that delicate chair in front of them, their smile looks stiff and serious. Still, will be found in every Japanese beauty magazine. Some of their hands are sucked on the ground. The afterglow falls on the wet ears, reflects a long lost golden. Some of them were seen with other white housewives, but their hands now seem more yellow. I thought there was a kind of bird that would fly to death before landing, but it didn't go anywhere. The bird was already dead from the beginning. The boat is still moving, and the story continues. One foolish bird dies, and another foolish bird will appear again.